Welcome back to the third video in our series where we answer questions about the nature of utility tokens. In this video, we will be covering the history of software licensing, issues with current license models, and our definition of our new tokenized microlicense model. If you want to fully understand Dragon Chain's tokenized microlicense, one needs to understand and consider the history of software licenses. With the advent of proprietary software in the late 1970s and 80s, software was typically sold under license for use. As the software industry evolved over the years, two types of license models were commonly used, the version license model and the subscription license model. A version licensing model allows a particular version of a software to be owned or used. This license would typically include any minor updates or bug fixes over time. This model does a very good job of letting value be retained, as the consumer still receives minor updates and physically holds the software to use at any time in the future. Some examples of version-based licensing models are Microsoft Windows 3.1 and Adobe Photoshop 7.0. In the 1990s and 2000s, many software vendors began to use the approaching ubiquity of the internet to provide subscription-based licensing, where the consumer pays on a time basis for access to the software. This model allows for software updates in place, generally lowering maintenance costs to the consumer and vendor. The vendor can control access to the services as well and provide feature-driven pricing models for the services. These two license types are not perfect and have underlying pitfalls. Version licensing allows consumers to own their data that was created on the software, yet doesn't allow you to stay up to date with current versions without buying a new version. Subscription licensing allows for consumers to have access to the most updated version of software yet charges them based on the ceaseless passing of time even when they are not using it. Dragon Chain's tokenized microlicense was created to provide a new model for software access. This model will allow for the local holding of licenses, much like the early models, yet also allow for decentralized hosting of the software services. It also standardizes many flexible forms of redemption via software access or execution. A key principle of the tokenized microlicense is that the token's license term interact on every use, execution, or access with complementary license terms embedded into every service to create a very flexible framework for software license innovation. For the vendor, the tokenized microlicense allows for flexible updates to the software, as well as the terms themselves on the blockchain. For the consumer, they are not paying for software that isn't being used. The ceaseless passing of time does not itself penalize. We've covered the history of software license, issues with current license models, and the definition of a tokenized microlicense. Thank you for watching our series on the nature of utility tokens. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on everything Dragon Chain.